Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So how am I needed right now is the question I asked myself this morning. Oh, as I was getting my oldest son Tyson ready for his summer camp. So we had a rough day yesterday. We had a rough day yesterday. And uh, he's not listening. And he he um, hit another kid. And just, you know, stuff that kids do sometimes. My boy Tyson is... You know, I've always shot away from the word empath. Because I always have seen it as this very kind of weak and powerless. And just really people who feel a lot of stuff. And quite honestly, I... Even though maybe I don't fit the profile of that, I feel I'm very much the same way. And I think that being somebody who feels a lot, in the past I would see as like a detrimental character trait, if you will. I almost saw as like a character flaw, like, oh my God, you can't go and move around the world because you're so sensitive and you feel everything. And it's like, just get a top skin, sister. That was kind of my my feeling about it. I'm sure that some people might feel a lot that, yeah, perhaps they do need to, listen, you got to figure out a way of how to move about the world, um, and actually live on this earth or to be in a space and around people who are going to really support who you are. If you're kind of operating on that plane, if you will. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I feel stuff very much. So I feel big and I feel low, you know, big, big like high highs, low lows. Talked about this recently in a podcast and I, and I did an episode about this like years ago as well. But my son Tyson is very much that same way. He feels a lot of stuff. He's a kid that will, um, you know, be moved by seeing a baby animal, a flower, the ocean, you know, like, like moved at seven and a half. I think that's pretty, pretty significant. Of course, we all think our kids are the best ever, but he is, he's just a great, great, really special kid. And then he can go to a place where he is angry, rage. So when stuff went down yesterday, and you know, the camps are really good. They're like, is there something that's going on? But we just told Tyson, like, you cannot touch. You cannot say I'm going to kick you in the nuts. Like, even though, it's, you know, there's a little bit of, a bit of me that kind of like, like laughs a bit. Because, you know, we kind of joke about stuff like that at home. The boys say those things. I don't make a big big deal. We make a big deal of saying, listen, these are not words you can say outside of like the house. Like I know we're kind of joking and stuff, but just know like if you're to say those kind of things at school or at camps or, you know, or other like families, like they don't know that you're joking. They might not understand that joke, buddy, you know? And so he gets that. He understands those nuances, but you know, when you say those things, they see it as a threatening as well. They should. And that there's not a tolerance for that stuff. And they just kind of said, listen, if there's one more thing, Tyson, you're going to be sent home today, right? And we had a rough summer last summer with a lot of stuff. Tyson just really having a hard time managing a lot of his emotions. And, um, you know, a year later, he's a very, very transformed kid from then. So proud of who he is. Not what he's done, but who he is. And so when I got off the phone with the counselor and then we picked him up at summer camp and he came home we talked and he was like he was exhausted number one no excuse exhausted um and we talked about and I just said look at buddy iPad goes away for a day like you know usually those kind of things like consequences we'll talk about so it's really clear if you do this that will happen right you have one more chance and then here's the consequence it's not about me it's not punishment it's just understanding this is the natural thing that will happen if you make that choice but because of what happened yesterday, and it was, you know, again, pretty intense to be, anyways. I just said, listen, Tyson, really softly, not like, you did this, and da, da, da. When I picked him up, he was upset because he lost, left his little precious Beanie Boo stuffy somewhere. And so we went back to try to look for it. And I could tell he was just exhausted. And um, so he came home, and he's still kind of upset about his stuffy. And we hadn't talked about what happened just yet. But he's like taking his clothes off because all my kids take their clothes off when they come home. <laughs> all my kids, my two of my my two children, my two boys, and uh, and he's crawling into bed. He's like going to the covers. He's like, "Mommy, I'm so tired." And this is a kid that doesn't 
like he doesn't do this you know he doesn't come home and take naps at seven and a half and so I knew something was kind of up with him and so then we talked about it really gently really you know Tyson you did this it was not okay it's a serious thing you can't touch people's bodies you can't say those things I'm gonna kick you in the nuts in anger and say you were just joking when some people feel that like they're really they feel unsafe around that here's what would happen if you did that as an adult you could be charged with assault and you could go to jail like you know there's a it's it's this fine line you kind of play as a parent right where i don't want to i don't want to be nor have i even found this to be effective the strict disciplinarian you must do this da, 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 you know no room for flexibility no room for any of that kind of stuff like i believe me i went there i tried that yeah it does not work on my kids at all it just puts them into a place of fear or they would just get mad back at me if I'd be like coming at like that strong energy with them you know what you put out you're going to get back right and so all this stuff we talked about was really calm was really just like felt very centered having the conversation but when they came this is the point of saying look at buddy daddy and I are concerned that there's just too much iPad time you need to have a rest and if tomorrow meaning today this is happening yesterday you have a great day camp listen to your teachers because you weren't listening yesterday interrupting a lot of the stuff they're trying to teach you guys golf if you keep your hands to yourself you're kind and loving to you know the 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 camp teachers the counselors and the kids that are there then you can have your ipad for an hour after camp today or you know tomorrow meaning today now as i share the story and he flipped he's like "Ah," he's yelling and stuff and then so i'm like he's like you know i don't want you in my room and i'm like okay buddy i'm gonna give you some space i'm just still calm about it i'm good i'm gonna let him feel what he's feeling let him get the anger out let him scream it that's okay he's not hurting anybody or himself by doing that and um and then and then it's really quiet i'm like oh what's going on there i went out like 20 minutes later he's fast asleep kids slept for like three hours exhausted right so then this and then you know he got up a little bit of something for food because by he probably got up at like at 7 30 or quarter to eight or something we're all getting boys ready for bed at that time and tubs and that kind of thing and um he had a little bit of food he snuggled with daddy and they went back to sleep and he slept gosh i don't know another probably 10 hours like just exhausted there's so much you know in summertime you know i kind of forgot you're outside like the whole day as a kid out in the sun and you know, it's like, it's, yeah, exhausted, exhausted. This is just week two of summer camp stuff. So routine and Tyson, you know, having a new like change is also a little challenging for him at times, but the, you know, what do I need to do now? This morning when he got up and he's like, mommy, can I have my iPad? And I go, buddy, remember our conversation flipped out again. I'm not going "Ah," doing the screaming again. So walked out, gave him space came back in a little later and then we had a conversation and before I went into the room and not to be like again stressed tense anxious because I could easily go to a place of like oh god I gotta get him to school I have appointments today I have work I need to do my husband I leave for Maui in three days um my sister-in-law Ed's sister comes tomorrow night she's gonna fly in from Toronto watch the boys for about eight nine days I'm like I gotta get stuff ready for Katie I gotta like you know get her all the summer camp stuff get like just there's a lot of things to be done dogs and all of this and get podcasts loaded up for the next two, next, you know, couple weeks now, because I do this a week in advance, and I'm like, okay. So my choices right now is freak out. I could be the disciplinarian again. Tyson, you have to. And if you don't, I'm gonna throw a dry pit all together. Ah. Could have done that. I've could I could I could do that. I could choose that. But what I really ask myself is what is what is needed right now? Like who do I need to be right now? Like, and just got really quiet inside. And literally just like, God, universe, higher power, source. Like, what is needed right now? And you know, what I heard back was like, you know what's needed? Your boy's a big feeler. You need to come at this calm. You want to, do you want to teach him calm? You come in calm. My husband had gone to Starbucks and came back during this whole thing, comes back and hears the screaming. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, it's okay. Just be calm. Don't react to him. Don't react to him. Just be calm. And so I allowed Tyson to get all that stuff out. 
And then it was like, okay, so now he stopped the screaming. So what is, what do I, what is needed now? Like what? And again, just like, let me just get quiet and listen. I'm like, I'm like, what if I created some other kind of like, you know, special thing? And I, first I came in and I said, because when my husband and I were away a year ago for this long, we've gone away for business trips, two, three, four, five days, seven, eight. It's a little, it's a little longer, you know, to be away from the kids. And, um, so what we've done is we've got like little, like small little toys, little present, and they get to open one each day. So they've got something special and we've just told them, Hey, each time you open up, just know that, you know, mommy, daddy picked these out with love and that we're thinking about you. And we still talk to them like every couple of days, but it can be a little tricky. The phone conversation, they're tired at the end of the day and it's time zone difference. And, you know, we don't expect a whole lot, but they have that little thing to know. And so I, I said, Tyson, I go, what are some things that would be special toys for you? Special little gifts? Because mommy's going to get those over the next few days before we leave on Friday. So I'm like, okay, what's needed right now? I just need to redirect the conversation. I just need to create a little bit more light into this right now. Because right now, he's feeling in a pretty dark place. And I know what that's like to be, to be there and to feel like there's no way out. Except I'm an adult. I'm a grown-ass woman. He's seven and a half. And so, you know, the the brain just does not have the physiology in place at that point at that age to be like, well, this is not, I'm making a big deal of it and it's going to be okay. And listen, a lot of adults don't even have those tools. They just spin off into story. And certainly my big boy was doing that. So I'm like, what is, what is needed now? And then once I kind of started, I could see like, he's, you know, he's kind of, he's switching out of the anger and the rage and the upset to like, okay, oh, actually mommy, I love, you know, those Playmobil ones, like the police ones. I really like those right now. Those are really fun. And then we started to, we had more conversation, more. And then, and then my husband, Ed came in and said, Hey Tyson, because one of Tyson's love languages, if you haven't read the five love languages, by the way, get that book. There's a regular book and there's also the five love languages for children. They are brilliant. So one of Tyson's love languages is quality time. So Ed came in. And almost like the assist, the handoff, because he knows now I got to go shower and get ready so I can get Tyson to camp. He said, hey, buddy, would you like to play for 10 minutes? And I was like, what? Daddy's playing with you in the morning? Oh, my God, that's a big deal, buddy. He's like, yeah, I'd like to play. So, you know, each of us, and I don't know if Ed really went to that place, but I certainly did. And maybe it was just maybe it was kind of, you know, just kind of falling into line with where I was energetic with all this stuff, too. Just like, what is needed now? What is needed now? And not even just what is needed for me to get my kid out the door. Because I knew that was going to happen. I just let go of that. I'm like, it's going to happen. It'll be okay. But what is needed now and who do I need to be in this moment? So here's your more tip for today, sister. What is something in your life that you are telling yourself that you're struggling with? Come on. You know what it is. It's your health. It's Maybe it's with your children. It's with your marriage, it's with your business, it's with spirituality, it's it's something, there's something, some specific thing in your life that you're just like, this sucks, this is hard, I'm struggling with this right now. And what I'll suggest that you do is to spend the next seven days just being quiet, like away from other people. You don't have to go anywhere. You can literally just go sit outside or get up five minutes early before the kids wake up or go sit on a park bench, you know, if your lunch hour, like something and just be like, just like quiet, like not trying to figure it out, but just like inside to hear yourself saying the word says, what is required now? And just be open to receiving that, like open. Because I know for myself, when I ask those questions within, to that higher power, God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it, which by the way is inside of us, then then I, I get answers, I get guidance. When I try to manipulate it, figure it out, let me you know, go to the analytical part of my brain, it, it, it's, I try to push things, it just it doesn't work well. I don't get what I need, I get what I think that I need. You know what's required? I'm going to tell Tyson right now that I'm his mother and he's my son and he can't talk to me this way and that's disrespectful. And bah, 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 bah. So that would be that space. Difference. A difference of like, what is needed now for my boy to feel loved? 
for my boy to know that, like, we got this. We can figure this out. And so whatever it is for you, sister, that you are struggling with right now, that is a hard thing in your life that you don't know what to do, I'm going to encourage you for the next seven days to just get still and quiet. Five minutes, three minutes, four minutes, three to five minutes. And just to ask yourself this question, what is needed now? And to just listen for the answers that come back with this. And just know too, like, you know, this deep type of work, it's hard to do it alone. You might go, no, 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 but Karen, like, you're here with me. I'm doing the things you talk about. Cool. But there's a next step. And if you were that sister listening that goes like, what's the next step past the podcast? It's to be in the sisterhood. So you can be around women who are like you that want these similar things. You do not have to do this alone. Not alone. We're all connected anyways. But you don't have to do this work alone, sister. So to sign up for the first seven days for free, that's my gift to you. I want you to head over to drkarenosram.com slash sisterhood. Also, if you don't already subscribe to the newsletter, head over to Dr. KarenOsmer.com slash action guide. And I'm sending you some free gifts, including the more for action guide, how to start your day in a place of power and stillness. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast here, sister. And I would greatly appreciate if you leave a five-star review and let other women around the world that are checking out podcasts connect with this message that need to hear this. So just know you taking a few minutes to leave a review and just like, this is what the podcast has meant for me. This is how it's helped me. Could definitely transform the life of another woman. Isn't that amazing? You taking a couple minutes. And if you're listening to this, you're like, this sucks, this blows. Then, you know, like, clear, like honestly, honestly with love, do not listen again. Find a podcast, a message, a book, a teacher, a someone, something that's going to get you what you want. Not an invitation to leave, to leave a nasty review. I don't do those things. So if you love the podcast, share the love. If it's not for you, I love you too, but find one that does. And quite honestly, I know a lot of podcasts. So if you want to, you can also email me and say, hey, you know what, Karen? This podcast is not for me, but I'm looking for this. Is there another podcast that you can maybe recommend instead? So you can email email me if you have that that question at Dr. Karen at Dr. Karen Osborne. Pardon me, Dr. Karen at Dr. Karen Osborne dot com, and I will do my best to find you a better podcast for you. So I will talk to you in the next episode, sister. A life of more. It's just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip. Subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.